You're watching Throttle House. I'm James. And that's Thomas. And this is the BAC Mono. <laughs> and James is going to have to wait. Because I'm not getting out of here anytime soon. You're looking at graphene enhanced super light carbon composite body panels. A 305 horsepower specially built four cylinder racing motor, pneumatically selected sequential gears, and pushrod activated twin wishbone adjustable racing suspension with full Ackerman geometry. I had to look up what all of that means, and as it turns out, it all comes together to produce a very specially built weapon. The BAC Mono is a specially built British track car like no other, and today we are lucky enough to have two to choose from. Both of these are custom built to the owner's specifications, and even though today we are just temporary caretakers of one of these great machines, we expect it to potentially be the most incredible thing we've ever driven around this track. The question is, at less than half the horsepower of the heavy hitters that have set some dizzying lap times here, where will the Mono settle in? And if you're new to Throttle House, we do car reviews, track tests, and quite a lot of messing about. So subscribe and hit the bell. The Mono doesn't care about having enough luggage space or Bose speaker upgrades or even radio. It's like Buzz Lightyear. It is singular in its mission to propel its 1300 pound body to infinity and beyond. And like Buzz Lightyear, this is the toy! And it is especially a toy in Canada because unlike the UK and most states and other places, it's not yet road legal here. And that's because it has to pass a bunch of safety tests, one of which is two of them have to crash into each other. And the Liverpudlians at BAC don't want to do that because they're over $300,000 Canadian each. That's a lot of maple syrup. And you can't blame them, which is a shame because if you could pull up to a Tim Hortons in one of these and see a bunch of confused Canadian faces wondering what all the fuss is about, I think that'd be quite fun. Okay, the BAC Mono. This is probably the best handling car I've ever driven. Oh my God, the steering is unassisted. I'm feeling every single little bump. It's unbelievable. Oh my God, the, the turn-in is unbelievable. We're on slick tires. Oh, and the grip is completely absurd. Uh, <laughs> and get onto the straights. Line it up. Uh, Sequential transmission, so you need a clutch to get started, but you don't need a clutch to switch gears. Just put flat and, and bang! That's the fastest transmission I've ever used. Oh my god. The engine revs really high. It's a specially built four cylinder. Madness. The vibrations are completely absurd. And the brakes are not any lock brakes, so you gotta pay attention. Otherwise, you'll lock up. Also, down here is a brake bias adjuster. Okay, that's boring stuff. The point is, is that this is an unbelievable car. And the best part about it, that while I'm having the most fun I think I've ever had in the car out here, James is over there with a really dumb look on his face. <laughs> oh, my big sheep horses are ridiculous. Okay. Neutral. That looked pretty fast. Yeah. Oh, there's a special bit just to put your... Yeah, yeah, your that's why I think that Alcantara is there so you can put... You can't get out without... Well, you can't. You can't. I promise you can't get out without a sticker. Uh, we'll see. We'll it's see. really tight. All right, I won't do it out of respect to the car. Come on. 
Do you need my help? No. no. <laughs> if this was on fire, I feel like I would... Okay. You'd be oh, a my arms are that everyone would be willing to make. Oh, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, Thomas Holland. I'm literally out of breath from driving it. I want to drive it now. Okay, go, you have a race suit. You go get that, and okay. we're all going to watch you put it on because it's going to be funny. The old technique. The old, the old technique of putting a race suit on. They call that the Planet of the Apes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, in you go. Yeah, in you. No, it's not as easy as it looks, is it? See, all of a sudden yeah, you can it. But the suit's in tight. The suit, yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is, yeah, but this is your suit from yesteryear. You wouldn't fit in this at all now. That's true. That's true. All the way in. Come on. There you go. It's in. All right, you know how to start it, right? Yep. I, I was born for this. I just got to find the clutch. There it is. Mono, one of a kind. He didn't stall it. I was really, really hoping that he'd stall it. I'm gonna have to hear about that forever because I stalled it the first time. Oh my God! That's different. So, did you notice how it kind of, it gets a little squirrely under brakes? Oh, see how easy it is to get out of no, here? you're just track. agile and I'm old. <sighs> yeah, squirrely under brakes. Squirrely. Squirrely. Squirrel, squirrely. In squirrely. We say There's squirrely. no V in the word, James. Squirrely. Squirrely. What, you're just trying to Yes, hard it now. does get squirrely off the, under the brakes, <laughs> but it rewards trail braking so much. Like, yeah, I it does. understeering, and then the moment you apply any brakes, it's like, let's do it! Yeah. <laughs> It is weight transfer and then it starts to rotate. But what I did, if I was going to critique it at all, yeah. this is the, literally the only critique that I have, is that there's not much brake pedal feel. So I, I wasn't 100% aware of when it was locking up. So all of a sudden you're like, oh, 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 we're going sideways yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. You just got to learn to be gentle. But yeah, you can brake so much later than any car I've ever driven. I, the hot yeah. laps are going to be crazy. They're going I to feel be crazy. sick and it's great. <laughs> okay, styling. It looks incredible. It looks incredible. So the reason this costs so much 
is that first of all, this has been, this has <laughs> been crafted, molded to the hands of the owner. Which is not us. Which costs 5,000 pounds. So, right. so about 10 grand. Almost 10,000 Canadian dollars. Yeah, yeah. As has the seat, which okay. I think is even more money. In both of which fit us very, very well. So you have to ask where, how much better could they fit? No, owner? and the owner himself said that he probably would just go for the just normal Just wouldn't grip. do it again, yeah. yeah. But I, I mean, I think it looks incredible. Like, I, I, maybe the colors are a bit muted with the black? I would do white, personally. You do white? I think the white with the black accents, the carbon fiber, that's what makes this thing look crazy. But like, it looks great in black, it looks great in red. Um, and obviously you can see uh, the adjustable. Um, What's the point of a windshield suspension. that's this big, by the way? Well, you can ask that, James, but then you can do a little, we'll do a close-up shot and you can see just how many bugs are on the front of this windshield. Yeah, but I just got denied lunch, <laughs> right? <laughs> that's right. Also, if you look very closely here, there's the ever, where is the ever so slight impression of a bird. Just as like, a, they've done it as like a decal? Yeah, no, <laughs> I, I hit a bird at speed. Just the, on purpose? No. The bird didn't, see, birds only are capable of maneuvering so quickly, and this thing moves so fast, yeah. it had no idea what happened. That's I turned it into sad. dust, poof. I think we need a moment of silence for the bird. You, you don't salute birds. Why not? The masters of the sky? No, you're asking the right question. Okay. Anyway, I think this is an absolutely, unbelievably incredible car never day. Driven, I've never done anything like it. I've never done anything like this. There's the transmission. The I can vibrations, see it. The vibrations, the noise. It's, it's you know, it's not that loud when you're out on the track. It doesn't sound like standing here. It's not that loud. Oh, you mean standing on the side of the road? Yes. But in the car. In the car, it sounds it's like, it sounds like yeah. you're inside of a wasp. <laughs> yeah, no, it does. Yeah. Oh. No, I love it. I love it to death, and I've never driven anything like it. Um, I get it though. You know, normally we get in cars. It's like 100 grand, 200 grand. That's insane. Yes. This is 300 thousand dollars. Yes. Or 150 thousand pounds, whatever. It's plus customization. And it's worth every single penny. I get it. You have to have a trailer and a man to take care of it yeah and a track but if you're looking for a track day car this is the most perfect thing i can possibly think of every like, i can't imagine how anything could be better i think that the, there isn't a question as to whether this is faster than our fastest car on the track which is the currently the zl11 the ZL11 one, one LE. One, well, ZL11 one LE if you americans but it's brit day yeah so it's zl1 the question is is by how much will it be faster go on then on your skates all right Okay, time for the hot lap. Normally I let you listen to the car, but since this is an open top, it's mostly wind noise. So I thought I would talk you through a lap in a mono at the throttle house test track. Turn one, very fast. Trail break in, braking as late as possible after the straight, and then downshift to find front grip for turn two. Fly over the apex of three and then lay into the throttle. Turn four is flat in a lot of cars, but the mono, even on slicks, still wanted to do a four-wheel drift, so I had to be cautious. This mini straight here is a challenge is I want to maximize speed, but still get the turn into five correct. Now, trail braking in here to carry a lot of speed, then brake hard, downshift, and take as much track as possible on the exit. Flat on the throttle early, down to turn six. Turn six A is fast, and you need to start braking through it to set the car up for six B. I deliberately go wide here to do a late apex and lay on the throttle down the inside straight. There is a large bump on the outside here I have to avoid, and then it's just managing grip into turn seven then lay on the brakes, downshift, turn into eight, and take as much track as necessary on the outside. Now the final turn, turn nine. This is a long sweeper that likes to overheat the front tires, so it's all about managing the front end grip and getting on the throttle as early as the car will allow to get the highest top speed down the straight towards the finish line. Oh, okay. Oh. Well, that did look bloody fast. Yeah, it was. It's gotta be single digits. As in like one minute and a single digit? And a single digit. digit? Yeah. Okay, we shall find out. So the fastest lap we've ever had is what? 111 something? One, yeah, 111, which was like the C8 and then the Z01 was just faster than it. I think the C8 was 112. I thought it was, a, anyway. I know oh, you're right, you're fastest. right. The C8 yes. was high 111s, the Z01 was low 111s. Yes, and the fastest lap that I did was a 107. And there you go, yeah. So I obliterated the lap record of this. That makes sense. And to be perfectly honest, there's more in it. There there's is. quite a lot more, actually. I, like, I would need a lot of time with the car to like, learn every idiosyncrasy of how it reacts to brakes and everything. But as it stands, without breaking a sweat, yeah. it crushed the lap record here. Would you agree that it, it gives you an immediate level of like, mediocre confidence? So even though there is more, it's, yes. not, it's not immediately very difficult to it, drive. It, no, it's, it's kind of like, it's easy to figure out, difficult to master. 
Does that make sense? Wow, that's a line. Someone's been watching Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> uh, yeah, this car's amazing. Best, best day at the track ever? Yeah, and that, you know what? Next time we get a crossover, everyone's going to be like, review it as a crossover. <laughs> what? No. When I was younger, they used to say that you can't say the word bubbles and still be in a bad mood. This is the adult equivalent. <laughs> Just one of these again. All right, here's the deal. We're going to sell both of Thomas's kidneys, and then we're going to buy one. Oh. All right. I want you all to know, watching out there, I don't feel like the guy that gets to drive special cars. I just feel like one of you, just a normal guy. This is all like a dream to me. So I want you to know that I don't take this for granted because very, very, very few people in the world get to drive one of these. I've never had this much fun in a vehicle.